Hi everybody. My name is Cheryl Hutto. I am a coach for Care Partners. Do you know how many thoughts that you have per hour? Estimates vary, but the general consensus is that it's somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 thoughts per hour. If you do the math and just sort of take a rough average on a per minute basis, it's around 50 thoughts per minute. And what are these thoughts? We don't even really know. We can only attach to two or three thoughts at any given time. The best that we can do is sense the flavor of our thoughts. One of the things that I am practicing lately is trying to stop throughout my day or at the very least at the end of the day and ask myself, what's the flavor of my thoughts? What was my mood during the day? What did my body feel like? Because this is the best way that I can figure out if negative thoughts were coming in or thoughts that really weren't in my best interest. We humans, by design, are drawn to our negative thoughts. As an example, if we were bitten by a dog as a child, then we may not think about it all the time, but we store these traumas in our bodies. And there's always some part of us that is afraid of dogs or that certain breed. And we may not consciously remember, but our brains remember and our bodies remember. For me, it's a German Shepherd. In truth, I know that all German Shepherds aren't going to bite me. But my brain has produced a thought that it believes is real. And our beliefs are not always reality. In fact, they rarely are reality. And even though we know this, we get caught in this cycle of fear-based responses and this fear-based loop of negative thinking all the time. So that around the German Shepherd, I, I, my ancient fear-based thought might be, it becomes my identity. It becomes something like, Cheryl is afraid of German Shepherds. So what can we do? We can bring an awareness and begin to untangle these negative thoughts, even if we don't know what they are, by simply noticing our mood at any given time. Dr. Tara Brock, you may know of her, is a pretty well-known psychologist and mindfulness teacher. She has offered us these three key invitations that we can use to help calm ourselves and untangle these negative emotions. The first is, please don't believe your thoughts. The second is, please, just pause. And the third is, please, may I remember love and kindness in some way. These invitations are really powerful and they can be asked in any order or even just one of them is very effective. Do you know that it takes a full minute and a half for an emotion to occur and then come back to neutral? That is, of of course, and, you know, unless we're fueling it with these negative thoughts that we don't know what they are. And when we do that, we can go on and on for days obsessing with worry and fear. And we all get caught fueling these uh, emotions, but why? Why can't we just press the stop button? Uh, you know, how many times have you been caught worrying about something for days on end and you sort of know it's ridiculous but just can't stop. Dr. Daniel Siegel is a psychiatrist and a leader in interpersonal neurobiology and he developed this really easy to understand model of the brain that he teaches to parents and children predominantly uh, and he uses the hand. So the hand if you fold your thumb over your palm and wrap your fingers down over it. The wrist is the brain stem. This is where the uh, emotions go in unprocessed. They are just simply fight, flight, or freeze. They enter right here. And they go into the thumb where the thumb is the limbic system which regulates these emotions. So we know it's happening, but we haven't thought it through yet. And this is, the, the fingers represent the, uh, the frontal, the cerebral cortex. And this is where our thought and reasoning happens. We can 
uh, think and communicate and write and uh, talk to one another and think things through. But the really great thing is the, the knuckles, which represent the prefrontal cortex. This is where we, as human beings, and we share this with a few other mammals, this is where we store our ability to have compassion, empathy, and tenderness towards ourselves and others. So what happens when we uh, get stuck and have these emotions, you know, that we're in this stress mode or a crisis happens, we, we flip our lids. And it's a great handy model. Um, kids love this model and they are, it's very, very useful and for adults too. So going back to the German Shepherd for a minute, you know, when I see the German Shepherd, even across the street, it may be on a leash, but in my body, I feel it. And, and here comes the survival mode. And, and all of a sudden I have flipped my lid. I just simply am triggered and I respond. It just keeps me in a stress state all day long. And with these 3000 other thoughts that I'm having per hour, who knows what I'm thinking all day long that has me walking around in a state of being half cocked. The brainstem and the limbic system are powerful and we need them, but we don't need to be stuck in this primitive state. We need to be able to think and reason and allow tenderness, whether it's toward ourselves or others. Your thoughts are not your reality. You are not your thoughts. So when you feel triggered or anxious, can you invite yourself to pause? Can you invite yourself for a moment to reflect on the idea that perhaps your thoughts are not true? And can you invite yourself to feel tenderness toward yourself so that you can extend it to those that you care for or anyone else in your life. And this has been a powerful practice for me. It really is effective. And there are so many other tools to help us bring ourselves down. Um, I hope this was helpful. If I can help you untangle any of your negative thoughts, I'm here. Thank you.